Anarcho-primitivism is an anarchist critique of the origins and progress of civilization. According to anarcho-primitivism, the shift from hunter-gatherer to agricultural subsistence gave rise to social stratification, coercion, alienation, and overpopulation. Anarcho-primitivists advocate a return of non-civilized ways of life through deindustrialization, abolition of the division of labor or specialization, and abandonment of large-scale organization technologies. Many traditional anarchists reject the critique of civilization while some, such as Wolfie Landstreicher, endorse the critique but do not consider themselves anarcho-primitivists. Anarcho-primitivists are often distinguished by their focus on the praxis of achieving a feral state of being through rewilding. History Origins <inaudible> 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 In the U.S., anarchism started to have an ecological view mainly in the writings of Henry David Thoreau. In his book Walden, he advocates simple living and self-sufficiency among natural surroundings in resistance to the advancement of industrial civilization. Many have seen in Thoreau one of the precursors of ecologism and anarcho-primitivism represented today by John Zerzan. For George Woodcock, this attitude can also be motivated by the idea of resistance to progress and the rejection of the increasing materialism that characterized North American society in the mid-19th century." Zerzan himself included the text, "'Excursions' 1863 by Thoreau in his edited compilation of anti-civilization writings called Against Civilization, Readings and Reflections from 1999. In the late 19th century, anarchist naturism appeared as the union of anarchist and naturist philosophies. It mainly was important within individualist anarchist circles in Spain, France and Portugal. Important influences in it were Henry David Thoreau, Leo Tolstoy and Elise Recluse. Anarcho-naturism advocated vegetarianism, free love, nudism and an ecological world view within anarchist groups and outside them. Anarcho-naturism promoted an ecological worldview, small eco-villages, and most prominently nudism as a way to avoid the artificiality of the industrial mass society of modernity. Naturist individualist anarchists saw the individual in his biological, physical and psychological aspects and avoided and tried to eliminate social determinations. Their ideas were important in individualist anarchist circles in France but also in Spain where Federico Arales pseudonym of Joan Montseny, promotes the ideas of Gravel and Zizli in La Revista Blanca 1898-1905, this tendency was strong enough as to call the attention of the CNTFAI in Spain. Daniel Guérin, in Anarchism, From Theory to Practice, reports how Spanish anarcho-syndicalism had long been concerned to safeguard the autonomy of what it called affinity groups. There were many adepts of naturism and vegetarianism among its members, especially among the poor peasants of the South. Both these ways of living were considered suitable for the transformation of the human being in preparation for a stateless society. At the Zaragoza Congress, the members did not forget to consider the fate of groups of naturists and nudists. Unsuited to industrialization, as these groups would be unable to supply all their own needs, the Congress anticipated that their delegates to the meetings of the Confederation of Communes would be able to negotiate special economic agreements with the other agricultural and industrial communes. On the eve of a vast, bloody, social transformation, the CNT did not think it foolish to try to meet the infinitely varied aspirations of individual human beings. Recent themes Anarchists contribute to an anti-authoritarian push, which challenges all abstract power on a fundamental level, striving for egalitarian relationships and promoting communities based upon mutual aid. Primitivists, however, extend ideas of non-domination to all life, not just human life, going beyond the traditional anarchists' analysis. Using the work of anthropologists, primitivists look at the origins of civilization so as to understand what they are up against and how current society formed in order to inform a change in direction. Inspired by the Luddites, primitivists rekindle an anti-technological orientation. Insurrectionalists do not believe in waiting for critiques to be fine-tuned, instead spontaneously attacking civilization's current institutions. 
Primitivists may owe much to the Situationists and their critique of the ideas in the society of the spectacle and alienation from a commodity-based society. Deep ecology informs the primitivist perspective with an understanding that the well-being of all life is linked to the awareness of the inherent worth and intrinsic value of the non-human world, independent of its economic value. Primitivists see deep ecology's appreciation for the richness and diversity of life as contributing to the realization that present human interference with the non-human world as coercive and excessive. Bioregionalists bring the perspective of living within one's bioregion, and being intimately connected to the land, water, climate, plants, animals, and general patterns of their bioregion. Some primitivists have been influenced by the various indigenous cultures. Primitivists attempt to learn and incorporate sustainable techniques for survival and healthier ways of interacting with life. Some are also inspired by the feral subculture, where people abandon domestication and have reintegrate themselves with the wild. Topic. Main concepts Some anarcho-primitivists state that prior to the advent of agriculture, humans lived in small, nomadic bands which were socially, politically, and economically egalitarian. Being without hierarchy, these bands are sometimes viewed as embodying a form of anarchism. Primitivists hold that following the emergence of agriculture the growing masses of humanity became ever more beholden to technology techno -addiction and abstract power structures arising from the division of labor and hierarchy. Primitivists disagree over what degree of horticulture might be present in an anarchist society, with some arguing that permaculture could have a role but others advocating a strictly hunter-gatherer subsistence. Primitivism has drawn heavily upon cultural anthropology and archaeology. From the 1960s forward, societies once viewed as barbaric were re-evaluated by academics, some of whom now hold that early humans lived in relative peace and prosperity in what has been called the original affluent society. Frank Hole, an early agriculture specialist, and Kent Flannery, a specialist in Mesoamerican civilization, have noted that no group on earth has more leisure time than hunters and gatherers, who spend it primarily on games, conversation and relaxing. Jared Diamond, in the article the worst mistake in the history of the human race," said hunter-gatherers practice the most successful and longest-lasting lifestyle in human history, in contrast with agriculture, which he described as a mess, and that it is unclear whether we can solve it. Based on evidence that life expectancy has decreased with the adoption of agriculture, the anthropologist Mark Nathan Cohen has called for the need to revise the traditional idea that civilization represents progress in human well-being. Scholars such as Karl Polanyi and Marshall Salins characterized primitive societies as gift economies with goods valued for their utility or beauty rather than cost, commodities exchanged more on the basis of need than of exchange value, distribution to the society at large without regard to labor that members have invested, labor performed without the idea of a wage in return or individual benefit, indeed largely without the notion of work at all. Topic. Civilization and violence Anarcho-primitivists view civilization as the logic, institution, and physical apparatus of domestication, control, and domination. They focus primarily on the question of origins. Civilization is seen as the underlying problem or root of oppression, and must therefore be dismantled or destroyed. Anarcho-primitivists describe the rise of civilization as the shift over the past 10,000 years from an existence deeply connected to the web of life, to one psychologically separated from and attempting to control the rest of life. They state that prior to civilization, there generally existed ample leisure time, considerable gender equality and social equality, a non-destructive and uncontrolling approach to the natural world, the absence of organized violence, no mediating or formal institutions, and strong health and robustness. Anarcho-primitivists state that civilization inaugurated mass warfare, the subjugation of women, population growth, busy work, concepts of property, entrenched hierarchies, as well as encouraging the spread of diseases. They claim that civilization begins with and relies on an enforced renunciation of instinctual freedom and that it is impossible to reform away such a renunciation. Based on several anthropological references, they further state that hunter-gatherer societies are less susceptible to war, violence, and disease. However, some—such as Lawrence Keeley— 
contest this, citing that many tribe-based people are more prone to violence than developed states. Topic. Domestication Anarcho-primitivists, such as John Zerzan, define domestication as the will to dominate animals and plants, claiming that domestication is civilization's defining basis. They also describe it as the process by which previously nomadic human populations shifted towards a sedentary or settled existence through agriculture and animal husbandry. They claim that this kind of domestication demands a totalitarian relationship with both the land and the plants and animals being domesticated. They say that whereas, in a state of wildness, all life shares and competes for resources, domestication destroys this balance. Domesticated landscape e.g. pastoral lands, agricultural fields and, to a lesser degree, horticulture and gardening ends the open sharing of resources, where, this was everyone's, it is now, mine. Anarcho-primitivists state that this notion of ownership laid the foundation for social hierarchy as property and power emerged. It also involved the destruction, enslavement, or assimilation of other groups of early people who did not make such a transition. To primitivists, domestication enslaves both the domesticated species as well as the domesticators. Advances in the fields of psychology, anthropology, and sociology allows humans to quantify and objectify themselves, until they too become commodities. Topic. Rewilding and reconnection For most primitivist anarchists, rewilding and reconnecting with the earth is a life project. They state that it should not be limited to intellectual comprehension or the practice of primitive skills, but, instead, that it is a deep understanding of the pervasive ways in which we are domesticated, fractured, and dislocated from ourselves, each other, and the world. Rewilding is understood as having a physical component which involves reclaiming skills and developing methods for a sustainable coexistence, including how to feed, shelter, and heal ourselves with the plants, animals, and materials occurring naturally in our bioregions. It is also said to include the dismantling of the physical manifestations, apparatus, and infrastructure of civilization. Rewilding is also described as having an emotional component, which involves healing ourselves and each other from what are perceived as 10,000-year-old wounds, learning how to live together in non-hierarchical and non-oppressive communities, and deconstructing the domesticating mindset in our social patterns. To the primitivist. Rewilding includes prioritizing direct experience and passion over mediation and alienation, rethinking every dynamic and aspect of reality, connecting with our feral fury to defend our lives and to fight for a liberated existence, developing more trust in our intuition and being more connected to our instincts, and regaining the balance that has been virtually destroyed after thousands of years of patriarchal control and domestication. Rewilding is the process of becoming uncivilized. Topic. Consumerism and mass society Brian Shepard asserts that anarcho-primitivism is not a form of anarchism at all. In Anarchism versus Primitivism he says in recent decades, groups of quasi-religious mystics have begun equating the primitivism they advocate rejection of science, rationality, and technology often lumped together under a blanket term technology with anarchism. In reality, the two have nothing to do with each other. Andrew Flood agrees with this assertion and points out that primitivism clashes with what he identifies as the fundamental goal of anarchism, the creation of a free mass society. Primitivists do not believe that a mass society can be free. They believe industry and agriculture inevitably lead to hierarchy and alienation. They argue that the division of labor that techno-industrial societies require to function force people into reliance on factories and the labor of other specialists to produce their food, clothing, shelter, and other necessities and that this dependence forces them to remain a part of this society, whether they like it or not. On the other hand, some do not think of industrialization as a coercive force, and merely advocate a primitivist lifestyle for environmental reasons. Topic. Critique of mechanical time and symbolic culture Some anarcho-primitivists view the shift towards an increasingly symbolic culture as highly problematic in the sense that it separates us from direct interaction. 
Often the response to this, by those who assume that it means that primitivists prefer to completely eliminate all forms of symbolic culture, is something to the effect of, so, you just want to grunt. However, typically the critique regards the problems inherent within a form of communication and comprehension that relies primarily on symbolic thought at the expense and even exclusion of other sensual and unmediated means of comprehension. The emphasis on the symbolic is a departure from direct experience into mediated experience in the form of language, art, number, time, etc. Anarcho-primitivists state that symbolic culture filters our entire perception through formal and informal symbols and separates us from direct and unmediated contact with reality. It goes beyond just giving things names, and extends to having an indirect relationship with a distorted image of the world that has passed through the lens of representation. It is debatable whether humans are hardwired for symbolic thought, or if it developed as a cultural change or adaptation, but, according to anarcho-primitivists, the symbolic mode of expression and understanding is limited and deceptive, and over-dependence upon it leads to objectification, alienation, and perceptual tunnel vision. Many anarcho-primitivists promote and practice getting back in touch with and rekindling dormant and or underutilized methods of interaction and cognition, such as touch and smell, as well as experimenting with and developing unique and personal modes of comprehension and expression. Because there are some primitivists who have extended their critique of symbolic culture to language itself, Georgetown University professor Mark Lance describes this particular theory of primitivism as literally insane, for proper communication is necessary to create within the box a means to destroy the box. Criticism and counter-criticism Notable critics of anarcho-primitivism include post-left anarchists Wolfie Landstreicher and Jason McQuinn, Ted Kaczynski the Unabomber and, especially, libertarian socialist Murray Bookchin, as seen in his polemical work entitled Social Anarchism or Lifestyle Anarchism. Topic. Wording and semantics Activist writer Derek Jensen's wrote in Walking on Water that he is often classified as a Luddite and an anarcho-primitivist. Both of these labels fit well enough, I suppose. Others, too, have designated his work with the latter term, however, more recently, Jensen began to categorically reject the primitivist label, describing it as a racist way to describe indigenous peoples. He prefers to be called indigenous or an ally to the indigenous. Topic. Hypocrisy A common criticism is of hypocrisy, i.e. that people rejecting civilization typically maintain a civilized lifestyle themselves, often while still using the very industrial technology that they oppose in order to spread their message. Jensen counters that this criticism merely resorts to an ad hominem argument, attacking individuals but not the actual validity of their beliefs. He further responds that working to entirely avoid such hypocrisy is ineffective, self-serving, and a convenient misdirection of activist energies. Primitivist John Zerzan admits that living with this hypocrisy is a necessary evil for continuing to contribute to the larger intellectual conversation. Topic. Glorification of indigenous societies Wolfie Landstreicher and Jason McQuinn, post-leftists, have both criticized the romanticized exaggerations of indigenous societies and the pseudoscientific and even mystical appeal to nature they perceive in anarcho-primitivist ideology and deep ecology. Zerzan has countered that the anarcho-primitivist view is not idealizing the indigenous, but rather has been the mainstream view presented in anthropology and archaeology textbooks for the past few decades. It sounds utopian, but it's now the generally accepted paradigm." Ted Kaczynski has also argued that certain anarcho-primitivists have exaggerated the short working week of primitive society. Arguing that they only examine the process of food extraction and not the processing of food, creation of fire and childcare, which adds up to over 40 hours a week. Topic. Criticism from social anarchists Besides Murray Bookchin, many class struggle-oriented and social anarchists criticize primitivism as offering no way forwards in the struggle for a free society, and that 
Often its adherents end up undermining that struggle by attacking the very things, like mass organization, that are a requirement to win it. Other social anarchists have also argued that abandoning technology will have dangerous consequences, pointing out that around 50% of the population of the United Kingdom requires glasses and would be left severely impaired. Radioactive waste would need to be monitored for tens of thousands of years with high-tech equipment to prevent it leaking into ecosystems, that the millions of people who need regular treatment for illnesses would die and that the removal of books, recorded music, medical equipment, central heating and sanitation would result in a rapid dropping of the quality of life. Furthermore, social anarchists contend that without advanced agriculture the Earth's surface would not be able to support billions of people, meaning that building a primitivist society would require the death of billions. See also Notes Bibliography Kaczynski, Theodore 2008. The Road to Revolution. Xenia Editions. p. 327. ISBN 978-2-88892-065-6. Further reading Books Abdelrahim, Layla Children's Literature, Domestication, and Social Foundation, Narratives of Civilization and Wilderness. New York, Routledge. ISBN 978-0-415-66110-2. Abdelrahim, Layla Wild Children, Domesticated Dreams, Civilization and the Birth of Education. Halifax, Fernwood. ISBN 978-1-552-66548-0. Booth, Stephen. 2001. Primitivism and Illusion with No Future. Green Anarchist. ISBN 0 9521226 4. Diamond, Stanley. In Search of the Primitive A Critique of Civilization. Transaction Publishers. ISBN 978 0 87855 582 6. Elliol, Jacques. The Technological Society. New York, Knopf. ISBN 9780394703375. Bruce, Ian. 2010. Il ritorno alla madre terra. L'utopia verde tra ecologia radical e ecoterrorismo. The Return to Mother Earth. The Green Utopia Between Radical Ecology and Ecoterrorism. In Italian. Editrice Uniservice. p. 229. ISBN 978-88-6178-595-3. Glendening, Chellis My name is Chellis and I'm in recovery from Western civilization. Shambhala. ISBN 0-87773-996-X. Humphrey, Matthew Anarcho-primitivism and direct action politics. Ecological Politics and Democratic Theory, The Challenge to the Deliberative Ideal. Psychology Press. ISBN 978-0-415-31431-2. Jensen, Derek A Language Older Than Words. New York, Context Books. ISBN 1-893956-03-2. Jensen, Derek The Culture of Make-Believe. New York, Context Books. ISBN 1-893956-28-8. Kaczynski, Theodore The Unabomber Manifesto, Industrial Society and Its Future 3rd ed. Berkeley, Jolly Roger Press. ISBN 0-9634205-2-6. Mander, Jerry in the Absence of the Sacred, The Failure of Technology and the Survival of the Indian Nations. Sierra Club Books. ISBN 9780871565386. Perlman, Freddie Against His Story, Against Leviathan. Detroit, Black and Red Books. ISBN 9780934868259. 
Quinn, Daniel Ishmael. New York, Bantam. ISBN 0-553-07875-5. Taylor, Braun Dark Green Religion, Nature Spirituality and the Planetary Future. University of California Press. pp. 91 onwards. ISBN 978-0-520-26100-6. Tucker, Kevin For Wildness and Anarchy. Greensburg, PA, Black and Green Press. Watson, David Against the Megamachine. Brooklyn, Autonomedia. ISBN 1-57027-087-2. Zerzan, John Elements of Refusal. Columbia, Missouri, CAL. Press, Paleo Editions. ISBN 9781890532002. Zerzan, John 2012. Of the Feral Children. London, CreateSpace. ISBN 1479294888. Zerzan, John 2012-2012-2012-2012-2012-2012-2012-2012-2012-2012-2012-2012-2012-2012-2012-2012-2012-2012-2012-2012-2012-2012-2012-2012-2012-2012-2012-2012-2012-2012-2012-2012-2012-2